What's up guys, I'm Jeff Montgomery and welcome to Tax Planning on the Whiteboard. Today we are going to talk about non-spouse inherited IRAs and the 10-year rule. There seems to be mass confusion on how Congress and the IRS is interpreting the complete withdrawal of IRA funds when a non-spouse inherits the account. It started out pretty simple with the SECURE Act of 2020, but then later on, the IRS and SECURE Act 2.0 has issued proposed regulations and the interpretation is different. In some circumstances, they're saying that required minimum distributions are required in years one through nine and a full withdrawal in the 10th year. Wow, everyone just thought you could leave it alone for 10 years and then withdraw the full amount. This regulation says no. So when does this apply? Well, let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, let's start with a little background. As you can imagine, this subject can get pretty confusing very rapidly. In December of 2019, Congress eliminated the stretch IRA for most non-spouse beneficiaries who inherit an IRA after 2019. They replaced the stretch IRA with a new 10-year rule they actually created three types of retirement beneficiaries in that legislation. The first one is called a non-designated beneficiary, NDB. These are not people, example, charities, and estate. The second one is an eligible designated beneficiary, EDB, and these are people such as your spouse and a few other categories. And finally, non-eligible designated beneficiaries, NEDB. These are people that are not eligible designated beneficiaries. This would be like a child or a grandchild typically. So we are going to focus on non-eligible designated beneficiaries in this video and specifically non-spouse beneficiaries such as a grandchild or a child not falling into those exemptions. So everyone thought, great, I can just leave the IRA alone for 10 years if I inherit it and completely withdraw it by the end of the 10th year after death. But in February of 2022, the IRS came out with a proposed regulation number 10594-20. The proposed regulation requires certain non-spouse beneficiaries who are subject to the 10-year rule must take RMDs in years one through nine. So you need to understand exactly who this applies to. You notice I didn't say all, I said certain non-spouse beneficiaries. I also said proposed. So this is a proposed regulation. So which non-spouse beneficiaries are required under the proposed regulation to take out RMDs in year one through 10? Well, that depends on how old the deceased IRA owner was at the time of death. Specifically, was the deceased IRA owner already taking RMDs or not? So in other words, did they withdraw before, did they pass away before their required beginning date or after? The RBD date has also been changed, which makes the entire process even more confusing. As of 2023, if you have not already turned 72 in 2022, your RBD date is April 1st of the year after you turn 73. Example, Mary turned 73 in November of 2023. Her RBD date is April 1st of 2024. It may be wise for Mary to take her first RMD by the end of 2023, but it is not required until April 1st of 2024, her RBD date. As a side note, if you were born after 1960, your RMD age is now 75. Okay, finally back to the subject at hand. You have a NEDB, non-eligible designated beneficiary that inherited an IRA with a deceased owner having died beyond their RBD date. Therefore, required minimum distributions must be taken between years one through nine. 
we have a non-spouse beneficiary, inherit an IRA, and that person was already required to take minimum distributions when they passed away. To make it even more clear, I think an example would do us well. So let's take Margaret, she's 80 years old, she dies in 2023. The beneficiary of her IRA is her daughter, Sally, she's 40. Sally is a NEDB and must follow the 10 year rule. Since Margaret died after her RBD date, Sally will have annual RMDs based on her single life expectancy from the single life table. The 2024 RMD is based on the single life table for a 41 year old, the year after death of Sally. Sally was 40. Whatever the remaining is in the account, you will take the final RMD in that year of December 23 for the mom, Margaret, and then Sally will begin in 2024, okay? In my experience and in my opinion, again, this is a proposed regulation, but it's almost a done deal, guys. The IRS has had a long-standing rule called the at least as rapidly rule. And basically what that's saying is if RMDs have already started, they cannot be stopped. It is possible they may backtrack off this rule. Um, I highly doubt it, but I guess it is possible. We'll see hopefully by the end of 2023 how they handle it. So our position is with our clients that if you are a non-spouse and you inherited an IRA and you are under the 10 year rule and the deceased has already begun or beyond their RBD date, already begun their required minimum distributions, you should take a RMD based on your single life expectancy for the year after death in years one through nine and have the complete RMD and the complete account be emptied by the end of the 10th year. Okay, so that's it. I hope that cleared up some confusion. Uh, if you like these videos, please hit subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. I'm Jeff Montgomery, and we'll see you next time on Tax Planning on the Whiteboard.